here today with Jess Mart, who's the ICRC Disability Advisor and is responsible for sport. Um, hello, Jess. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Um, Jess, now this isn't an area that I've ever worked in or an area of my expertise, so I'm looking forward to exploring um, what we're going to talk about today with you. But before we do that or anything else, would you be able to just um, introduce yourself to everyone who's watching and just tell us a little bit about your role and how you work with ICRC? Sure. Yeah, my name is Jess Mart, uh, and I am the ICRC's Disability Sport and Inclusion Advisor. Um, so in that role, I focus on sort of two separate or two separate but connected areas. Um, one is introducing people with disabilities, physical disabilities, in the areas where the ICRC works to sport um, and using that as sort of a lever to get them further included in society or included for the first time, um, depending on the cause of their injury. Okay, so um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how, because you're a wheelchair user yourself and how you came yeah. into this role. Yeah, so I, I am a paraplegic, uh, T67 paraplegic. Uh, I was injured about 22 years ago when I was 19 years old. Um, and I was an athlete before I got injured. And not long after, a few years after my injury, I discovered wheelchair basketball. And it was sort of a culmination, I guess, of, of my recovery and my rehabilitation. I sort of rediscovered the, the final component of myself that I had been missing up until that point. Um, and it just really changed my life and, and was an incredible opportunity for me to, to do some of the things and, and participate in sport at, at a high level like I had before um, and have that experience of camaraderie with teammates and, and focus and training and all those things that I had been missing. Um, so in 2009, after I'd been playing wheelchair basketball for about 10 years, uh, I got a request from Afghanistan for someone to come and teach the first small group of players there uh, in this little town called Maimana in the north of Afghanistan how to play wheelchair basketball. They had just been given a court, uh, an outdoor court and a ball and some wheelchairs, but nobody there knew how to play or knew how to coach the game. So they sort of gave these guys a ball and said, go play, good luck. And then this woman who lived in New York near where I lived um, was there doing a project not related to wheelchair basketball. She was actually doing a, a film, I think, on women's issues and randomly came across these guys playing wheelchair basketball at this court in Maimana. And she just was so fascinated by this very unusual um, experience of seeing basketball, first of all, and people in wheelchairs playing basketball in, in this little town in Afghanistan that she went up to them and started asking them what they were doing and how they, they came to be doing that. And, and she asked, what can I do when I go back to the United States to help you guys with this, this new thing, that you're, this new passion that you have? And they said, well, we need somebody to teach us how to play. We, you know, we have all this equipment and this court, but we don't know what we're doing. We've never seen a basketball game before. We've certainly never seen a wheelchair basketball game before. So can somebody come and teach us? Um, so I ended up being that person. And I became connected to the ICRC while I was there um, and got in touch with them and started discussing how in Afghanistan, sport might be a logical continuation of the physical rehabilitation process. So I started working with a, a person named Alberto Cairo, who runs the physical rehabilitation and orthopedic program in Afghanistan for the ICRC. He was really passionate about finding a way to use sport to kind of not only physically continue that rehabilitation process, but also give people an opportunity to start socially interacting in ways that were not um, common for people with physical disabilities in Afghanistan at that time. So we started working together and have been working together in Afghanistan ever since. And then uh, from there, I've worked with the ICRC um, as a consultant in several different country contexts to build similar programs. And now, um, the last year, have been working in this role as the Disability Sport Inclusion Advisor, trying to expand that to all the countries where the ICRC has physical rehabilitation programs. I mean, it's a great, it's a really great thing that you're doing, and and I can see um, the 
benefits to individuals um, in, in allowing them to participate in sports again and giving them those opportunities. There's a couple of things that are on my mind for questions. One is about um, the person, uh, the wheel, um, the person, the athlete, uh, the wheelchair user, and the other is about um, how as a physiotherapist can learn from your experiences. So first of all, um, what have you, how have you seen how the opportunity to allow someone to participate in sport has changes a person or influences a person's life and, and, ha and their experience of their disability? Well, I mean, the, the, the reason I've continued to do this for as long as I have and the reason I, I am so passionate about it is because of the profound transformations that I've had the opportunity to see in these people. You know, just as an example, um, that group that I went to coach in my in 2009 for the first time, one of the reasons I wanted to go work with them is because the woman who was asking for a coach to go to Afghanistan in 2009 from the U.S., which was, you can probably acknowledge, a little bit of a crazy seeming request. Um, she sent around this little flyer that she had made with a photo of the, the team from my man. Um, and I remember looking at that and seeing that all these guys were sitting in these wheelchairs and they were all looking down, not looking at the camera. They all had kind of these downcast looks on their faces. And I just thought, these guys deserve a chance to realize the self-empowerment that comes with playing sport and, and feeling kind of achievement and feeling a part of a team and feeling like you're being recognized for something other than your physical disability. And even by the end of the week that I worked with them, already their countenance had completely changed. You know, at first it was hard to get them to make eye contact. And this has been my experience actually with, with disabled people um, that I've worked with in countries all over the world um, in this program is at first they're very nervous and shy because they're used to not being recognized. They're used to sort of being on the margins of society. And particularly in the places where, where the ICRC works, um, where the, you're dealing with you know, war and conflict, um, as well as developing country context, where people are worried about all these life and death things every day, and sometimes the people um, on the margins of society, the, the people with physical disabilities are the ones that are sort of pushed to the side and not really, not really recognized. So I, was, I saw them first in that way, and then over the course of just that first week, there was this complete transformation because they realized that someone from outside their little community um, of people with disabilities in my mind was recognizing, was valuing them. And those people now, after some, you know, some of them were 14, 15 years old when I first started working with them, are now, you know, in their early 20s. Several of them are now playing for the Afghanistan men's national wheelchair basketball team and traveling around the world representing their country, wearing their flag on their back, having the national anthem played for them, um, doing TV interviews um, on major news networks in Afghanistan. So you just can imagine that transformation over time, and it doesn't take that long, but to see the, the difference between 2009 and 2018 is it, just phenomenal. I, I look back at the pictures of those guys when I was first working with them and I can barely even recognize them. It's hard for me to fathom that that, you know, unconfident little teenager is now a, a self-confident man who's, you know, many of them are going to, to university or working in regular jobs, supporting their families or running their own businesses. It's just, it's, as I said at the beginning, it's a lever to really start an inclusion process so even though sport itself is so empowering and really gives them that self-confidence and that self-identity outside of being a person with a disability it also opens up a whole world of possibility in terms of how they can then ingratiate themselves into society yeah and it sounds like it doesn't take you long from the first instance of um working with the these people the people that you worked with in Afghanistan, if it just took a week to make um, those small changes, and although it's taken eight, nine years to make big changes in their lives, if people can make such a big difference to um, someone in just a week, then there must be 
or we need to think about how we can do that with or how people can do that or how physiotherapists and other therapists can do that with the people that they're working with that are using a wheelchair and so it's uh, you know it's this course has uh, taught us all about how to fit wheelchairs and how to provide people with a wheelchair and appropriate fitting and, and you know doing the best we can to give them the best wheelchair for their individual circumstances but I guess it doesn't stop there does it we need to think about how we can continue to contribute to improving their lives as they use their wheelchair and sport is a good way to do that so I wonder if you have any advice for physiotherapists uh, healthcare professionals all over the world who um, might be thinking about how they can sort of start along this process that in the same way that you're working with individuals to um, provide them the opportunity to do sport and things. What advice would you give to people? Yeah, I think the, the first thing is just during the rehabilitation process, um, making sure that there are opportunities for the patients to have an awareness that they can do something physical that that simply um, relearning the ability to to move and and get around is not kind of the final um, the final goal that that whether they become an athlete or whether they just use sport as some sort of form of physical exercise or fun you know that it it should be um, kind of integrated into the process at some point. So that doesn't mean that a, a wheelchair user has to go become a highly competitive wheelchair basketball player. But as long as physical exercise and um, and teamwork and, and that camaraderie is factored into the rehabilitation process in some small way, it's going to give them the opportunity and the, and the realization that they can do more then just learn to, to push around a wheelchair to get around from place to place. And I think the really important thing to realize is once they start having that experience, it completely is going to change the way they approach the wheelchair. Because first, your body starts to change when you start doing physical exercise on a regular basis, whether it's competitive or whether it's casual, um, you, you get stronger, you get uh, better cardiovascular fitness um, and you start to see what you can do in your wheelchair in a different way it's not just necessarily getting from your bed to the kitchen or from your house to um, you know the place down the street that you, you go to meet your your neighbors it all of a sudden can become a tool to explore anywhere in your community anywhere in the world really and so they see that as as a different approach to the wheelchair itself and then they'll start to see the wheelchair in a different way as well so i remember my experience in, in my first chair when i was first injured morphing from trying to create a wheelchair that was comfortable and one that you know was i guess the least painful to one that was as mobile and as um functional as possible. So I wanted to shed as much weight. I wanted it to be as as tight and fill, fill as small a footprint as possible. And I'm still 22 years later making small adjustments to my wheelchairs every time I get a new one or even as I have one to, to make it as, as small and mobile and functional as possible. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an exciting thing for a physiotherapist to work with a patient to help them figure out how to do that, both both on their own and with the assistance of the physiotherapist, um, to sort of see the opportunities to change their wheelchair in small ways, or as they move from one wheelchair to another, to allow them to, to find ways to allow that wheelchair to give them those opportunities to sort of experience the physical world. Yeah, and I guess if, when when they start to um, experience their wheelchair in that different way or look at their wheelchair in that different way then they are more likely to go out and um, you know experience society so have better societal integration um, so I get that's a really important message isn't it that it doesn't it doesn't just stop with uh, providing the wheelchair but it's important to well first of all continually change the wheelchair to adapt to your needs and and and, and what you're doing and also to um, allow you to do the 
to, to integrate into society to more and to have these opportunities for sport and activity and um, um, camaraderie, yeah. say, which is really important. Absolutely. And I think from the, from the therapist perspective, it's, it's really an educational process but from them to, to the patient as they're working with them, um, not thinking just in terms of providing the wheelchair, but also that, that education of how over time can you make this wheelchair work better for you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, so it's really, it's really nice to talk to you about this um, because I think a lot, of, a lot of what we do pays attention to just fitting the wheelchair and making sure you have an appropriate wheelchair. So it's nice to um, definitely think about the broader picture and, and the importance of what the wheelchair allows for a, for a disabled person. Um, is there anything else in your experience that you've experienced or that you, knowledge that you have that you that you would like to share with individuals out there who are kind of just learning how to work with people and provide wheelchairs for disabled people? Yeah, I think the other thing that's really important to keep in mind is also factoring into that educational process um, how to maintain the wheelchair, uh, because as these people become more active and start using their wheelchairs in different ways, from my personal experience and my experience working with others, um, they are going to, to damage the wheelchair. They're going to break the wheelchair. They're going to they're going to find ways to push the wheelchair sort of beyond the boundaries of maybe necessarily what it's designed to do. So, informing them on you know how to how to change a tire when they when they pop a tire or to um, fix a, a caster if that if that breaks or fix the holding back on their chair if they manage to push it too far and, and snap apart um, is all really important. And as an active wheelchair user, you need really to always be aware of sort of what little set of tools you need to have with you to fix your chair if it breaks and you're out away from home and don't have um, the ability to, to get back to a, a mechanic or a bicycle shop or something like that. Um, and then just the kind of basics of, of maintaining the chair on an ongoing basis as you learn to use it in a little bit different way. Yeah, it's, it's a very good point, actually. Um, I guess it won't, yeah, putting more demands on the wheelchair will put more demands on, on maintaining it. So it's a good, Absolutely. it's a good point to think about. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really good to hear your experiences and to hear what you've been doing. I think hearing how you how you've seen, how in your work you've seen people go from, um, you know, perhaps struggling a little bit with their disability to then being able to identify with themselves as an athlete. Um, not everybody has to become an athlete, but no. it's definitely um, nice that people can go through a journey from um, to a journey to being more able within with their wheelchair. Yeah, and I think. It that's a great point and, and one that, that I think is important to make to everybody is that introducing someone to sport and physical activity does not, as I said, necessarily mean that they are going to, you know, move in the direction of becoming a competitive athlete and a member of a national team and competing, you know, at, at the highest level. But maybe having that opportunity, maybe interacting with, with other people who are highly motivated and, and pushing themselves to, to do things that necessarily their society may not assume that they could do might give someone the realization that oh I can become a musician or a, a professional writer or a you know a, a scientist or, or any other thing that you know they, they never would have maybe considered that they could do given how society views people with physical disabilities in, in the country where they're growing up so I think that is the, the, the real message, is introducing someone to, to sport and, and taking them kind of outside their, their preconceived notions of what being a person with a physical disability means is just going to open up that world to, to all these other opportunities as well. It's a, it's a very good message to end on, Jess. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that sums it up very well, our short conversation. It's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, where can people find out more about your work and what you get up to if they uh, want to know more? So um, I write a blog 
the, the address is Jess Marks, J E S S M A R K T dot WordPress dot org. Um, and the ICRs can follow me on Twitter um, and get that information that way. But there are some, some great stories and photos of some really courageous people doing amazing things with, with sport around the world. That's great. It's great to know because um, I think I, I, in my in having a little read around your work before talking to you today, there are a lot of amazing stories that you've been sharing. And I think my message to everyone out there would be to have a read of um, some of Jess's writings because they are incredible. Um, and it's a really um, very valuable piece, uh, sort of line of work that you're in. And uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. Um, it's been really, really useful. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Rachel. <laughs>